In 1799, it was discovered that human tissue can be electrically stimulated, meaning that electricity was an integral part of what makes the human biology function. This was important for a wide variety of reasons, but one reason I want to focus on today was something that happened later in 1929. In that year, a German ophthalmologist by the name of Dr. Carl Forrester proved that if you electrically stimulate the sightseeing part of the brain, you can get a blind person to perceive some lights. This was important as it showed that sight can be at least partially restored after vision loss. Fast forward again to the year 2020, and 1 million people in the United States are blind, and that number worldwide is 40 million. If we include all those that have serious problems with their vision, that number jumps to 285 million. That's 285 million people with limited vision, of which 40 million have no vision at all. The question becomes, do we have the technology to help them? Can we cure blindness? To answer this, we must understand how vision works. You see, when light enters the eyeball, it is refocused on the back of our eye in an area known as the retina. The retina contains what is called ganglion cells. These cells convert the light that hits them into impulses that move along the optical nerve. The impulses travel all the way to the visual cortex inside the brain, where they are interpreted as vision. This process allows us to see. With that in mind, there are multiple possibilities as to why one could be blind. They all generally can be traced back to any part of the vision process being derailed. For instance, Damage to the front of the eyeball would mean the ganglion cells don't receive a proper light source. This would stop them from sending signals to the optical nerve. Likewise, damage to the optical nerve would deter the signals in the eye from reaching the brain. Damage to the visual cortex in the brain is generally considered the most severe. Blindness can be attributed to damages in any of these three areas, the eye, the optical nerve, and the visual cortex. So. How do scientists try to restart the vision process once any of these three fail? Well, thanks to Dr. Forrester's work, scientists understand that the visual process on a basic level is essentially an electrical process. Small electrical currents in key areas create unique signals the brain can understand. In fact, if you put a blind person's head in the presence of a strong magnetic field and bombard his brain cells with electromagnetic energy, chances are they will see some flashes of light. The key is to recreate this phenomena in a structured but continuous manner so the brain perceives normal vision. One of the first ideas that came to mind for scientists was to place a device inside the eye that would excite the cells in the back of the retina, as that was the area that sent the primary visual signals. You put what is called an electrode in the retinal area of the eye. This electrode is a conductor device, meaning it transports an electrical current along its surface. In this case, it will be used to charge up the retinal cells with a small but controlled current. It would get powered by an intermediary device that obtains signals from a camera. The camera would then be placed on a pair of glasses the patient would wear. This setup includes a limited level of vision in the form of small flashes of light. The key to adding more vision is to add more electrodes and then reprogram this apparatus depending on what the person sees. Each set of images will correspond to a different current in a different number of electrodes. Through trial and error, that along with some training can give a blind person some level of useful vision. With that in mind, let's rewind back to 2007. That was when the Argus prosthesis used this exact concept and became the first commercially approved device in the United States. In their case, they used 16 electrodes and were able to restore vision for many people suffering from blindness. Fast forward again to 2012. That's when the Argus second generation device came out, with a setup increasing the electrode count to 60. The electrode count is important, as it is similar to the pixel count on a TV. So more electrodes means more complex images that a blind person can now see. In its trial phases, the Argus 2 setup gave improvements to 96% of the people it was tested on. 87% of the blind patients in one trial were able to find a door using the device. 73% of them were able to follow a line. And 57% were able to distinguish static objects from moving ones. The results slightly deteriorate after a few years, but not by much. But let's stay in the year 2012, because another significant development happened. 
Dr. Sheila Nuremberg was a scientist researching on animals to see the electrical impulse that the eye of an animal sends to the brain. She successfully removed a retina from an animal and was able to observe the electrical impulses this live retina was sending after being exposed to images. Amazingly, Dr. Nuremberg was able to track a consistent band of signals for every image. This meant everyone's eye contained a code to translate every image into a signal that the brain understands. This has become the basis for Dr. Nuremberg's own device setup. Her design uses a chip with a component called an encoder and another called a transducer. They are wirelessly connected to a camera on the face of the blind individual. The camera records the image. The encoder then uses the code from Dr. Nuremberg's work and translates this image. The transducer then converts that translation into an electrical signal that can be sent to the brain. Unfortunately, Sheila's work wasn't able to bring a functioning device due to current technological limitations. Despite the potential of these retinal devices, they are mired with some drawbacks. One issue is cost. It costs over $100,000 to have these devices implanted. And that doesn't include the constant follow-ups with doctors after the surgery. This high fee is a struggle for many healthcare systems and impossible for most individuals. Sadly, most of the world's blind will never get a chance to try any of these devices due to the cost alone. Another issue is the nature of the prosthesis itself. Retinal devices need to be implanted in a narrow area of the eye and rely on healthy cells in that region to work. This is difficult from a surgical perspective, but it also does not work on people who have severe eye or optical nerve damage. This limits the pool of blind people it will help. Another method of this prosthesis involves bypassing the eye, retina, and optic nerve altogether. This involves placing an electrode array directly above the visual cortex. This is called cortical implant. In 2002, a blind man by the name of Jens Newman worked with Dr. William Dubell to restore his vision by implanting a cortical implant on his brain. This electrode would be connected via wire to the rest of the device. Neumann would wear glasses with a TV camera that would capture images. Those images would be sent to a computing device Neumann was carrying. That computing device would then decipher the image and send an electrical current to the brain. Jens Neumann, who was completely blind, was able to see enough light dots to once again walk and even do a simple drive. Unfortunately, the device deteriorated and stopped functioning, and Dr. Dubell passed away, putting much of his progress on hold. Despite that, though, cortical implants were embraced by other institutions, who continue to develop the technology. Second Sight is one company that is already leading the way in this area. Their Orion cortical implant is currently in its trial phases and is being tested on six patients. The new design is similar to Dubell's, except the communication between the electrode and the intermediary device would be wireless. This is then connected to a video processing unit which gets its signals from a camera mounted on a pair of glasses on the blind person's face. If this technology passes the trial phase, we could be closer than ever to finally curing blindness. Not only do the cortical implants offer a one-fit-for-all solution to blindness, the visual cortex offers a much larger surface area, meaning more electrodes could be planted to give higher resolution images. Now, keep in mind, this is not all the research that is going on. In fact, there are at least 19 different companies and institutions currently doing some level of research on this issue. Unfortunately, however, we had to cut and condense quite a bit to keep this video short. But let us know what you think. Do you think we will be able to cure blindness in the future? Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you would like us to make more videos on this topic in the future. And if you did like this, make sure to click like and subscribe. Thanks.